feet. now we come to this hour to deliver your word into your children today God we pray that we will be blessed by your word challenged inspired by your word God empowered by your word and set free by your word give us understanding father let your word become alive within our hearts in Jesus name amen man if you will open your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 31. We want to do a continuation to a part two that we talked about uh, last week about turn on the power. Uh, we talked about that. So today, this morning, we wanna talk about, once you have turned on the power, we wanna talk to you about unleashing the power. Uh, all of you shout unleashing. The power. the power. Tell somebody I'm about to, I'm about to unleash, unleash all the power all of heaven. Yeah. And let me tell you something. It can be done and will be done if you believe that you can do it. Amen. Now I want to talk to you this morning as we read in the scriptures here one particular verse verse 31 I'm not going to go and read the whole chapter but you go back and read it but I'm going to tell you what each group of verses contain in the story that is telling because here we find what David did by unleashing the power of God in his circumstances. And it reads, and one told David saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. You may be seated. Notice what David did. He asked God to turn all that Absalom had planned against him. He asked God to turn it all into foolishness. Now, Samuel starts off from verses 1 to verse 9, and, and you don't have to put it up there. He tells us about Absalom, David's son, start causing the people to love him more than they loved David, because David was the king, and his son turned against him. And... Um, the reason they was feuding because Absalom was one of the sons who raped his stepsister or his half-sister, however you want to put it, and the other brothers was upset about it and everything, so uh, Absalom started warring against David. And then he started causing all the people to turn towards him 
and start forsaking David. In verses 10 through verses 12, Samson tells us, Samuel rather tells us, that Absalom now makes himself king. It wasn't God that did it, but he made himself king. So he was in a full takeover. And then beginning at verse 13 and ending down at verses 24, you would find that David runs away from Jerusalem because he didn't want to face Absalom because now they have conspired all the people to turn against David and get on Absalom's side. Have y'all ever had family and friends who was once with you and committed to you and then somebody come and get into their ears and now you find your friends and some of your family turn against you and go to war against you? This is what David was going through. And, and David began to run because they were coming for battle. Now, in verses 25, is what they call the covenant box, where all of the blessings of God's word was. So they, they take the covenant box to Jerusalem. And then as they continue, David now in verse 30, David gets the news. Verse 30 says, but David continued to go up the hill called Hill of Olives. Now let me go to my, my King James Version so that you all can follow along with me where you won't get confused. So after David takes and he went up to the Mount of Olives and he began to weep, began to cry. And then the Bible says that he covered his head and then those that were still with him they covered their head and they began to cry also as they went up. And then we get to our text scripture, verse 31. David, as one of them told David says, uh, Ahithophel is among those who have conspired against you. Now, uh, Ahithophel was one of David's closest counselors. One that David trusted in, one that David got all of his information from. It was like his number one right hand person turned against him and started hanging out with Absalom. And David begins now to not only just turn on the power, but David began to unleash the power. Now, how do, his, how do he do that? Let me share with you now where we're at. Jesus said, if my word abide in you and you in my word, then not only do you have the word of God, but you have God who is Christ, Christ the Holy Spirit. So you have all the power of heaven in you. Tell somebody that because they may not believe me, but tell your neighbor, you have all the power of heaven in you. See, Zechariah say, look, it's not by might nor by power, says the Lord, but it is my spirit. So it is the spirit of God that is in us. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So when you have the spirit of God in you, you have all of the power of God. That's why Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You have to unleash it. He said not only will they speak in new tongues, but they will cast out demons and they will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed. But we have to do our part we, most of us are walking around with all of this power, but yet we're blinded that we're more than conquerors. We have all of this power, but yet we're blinded that we can do anything through Christ who give us the strength. We don't have to walk in defeat anymore. Tell somebody that. But what you have to learn to do is unleash this power. Now most of you, I know sometimes you know you become wounded and you need to get back to the fold and you need to get to the general, the pastor, or whoever to help you out. But most of you 
who are still healthy, who have not been wounded in battle, you just got have to learn to unleash that power. You know, when grandma and mama, daddy get mad, and it seems like when they start putting the, the whatever you want to call it to you, it feels as though they have unleashed everything in the world upon you. And the more you holler, it seems like the harder they hit. And the quietest you holler, the harder, so nothing soothes the pain. But see, God has given us power, and until we learn to unleash the power, then we won't do it. You have to, like the Bible say, when you unleash the power, guess what? You can do like Paul. Paul say, look, I can think my own self happy. Regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of what I'm suffering, I can just do my own self. So what are we talking about unleashing power? Power is not determined by the number of resources that are around you. It's not determined about that. Most people get excited when they have a lot of people around them because now they figure they can do everything. Can I remind you that even Peter was in the boat with all of his brethren and yet they were all afraid but it was Peter who unleashed the power that was in him and walked on the water by the command of Jesus to come to him. So you have to understand that sometimes you have to just fight this battle all by yourself. But where we make our mistake at is when we run to others. See, when you run to others crying, it's okay to run for advice. It's okay to go to them for wisdom. It's okay to go to them for prayer. But if you go to them because you are defeated, it is a sign that you need to wake up that power that's in you. Because even a wounded dog won't let you get away with too much. He'll still bite. Look at somebody say, I'm wounded. But don't take that for granted. That's when I'm at my ferocious point is when I'm wounded. If you ever want to see a person at their ferocious point, let them be wounded. Sometimes we're a little bit too happy to unleash power. We're, I'm just happy, sanctified, glorified in God, and hallelujah, I'm just good, and God just wants us to love everybody. That's my Joel Osteen impersonation, y'all. Y'all supposed to give me a hand clap on that one. I ain't get a star on New York. But anyway, listen. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and violence taken by force. You have to unleash that power. Quit being beat up by the devil and by the things of the world and unleash that power. You have to be able to stand and tell yourself, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm not going to go through this anymore. You sometimes have to tell your employer, you are not my source you are just a resource that god used now don't tell your boss that you have to speak that in the spiritual realm you know when you know i know how i go i've been on both ends i've been an employee and i've been a boss so i know how to do it you walk away yes sir yes ma'am you walk away and you say to yourself you need to know you go to all your friends they need to know they're not the resource they're just a resource god is the source until the word get back to them and then they call you an office and say, I didn't say that. <laughs> Tell somebody to unleash that power. <laughs> so it's not about the resources that are around you. It is never informed by the things you hold command over. David, after being unseated by his own son Absalom, had to run out of the kingdom without even his shoes on his feet. Sometimes you have to just go. And not only do you have to run, sometimes you have to run away and leave people. Sometimes you have to get away from people. Sometimes God have people around you that's for your good that you reject. Because we want people to succumb around us, learn from David. Even a Theophile turned against David. Because he wanted to be with Absalom. So some of his most trusted officers were now with his enemies. And he was privy to their counsel and knew the wisdom which they operated because David wasn't a fool. And now watch what God tells us. He says that the, the devil uses no new tactics. So you should be aware to everything that he used. If you're aware of it then, let me hear you clap your hands. Don't fool me now. You got to get acquainted to how the devil operates. 
the stuff that he used, he'll use your child against you. He'll turn your husband against you. He'll turn your wife against you. But you have to know how to identify it like Job. When Job wife say, man, look at you. Go and cuss God and die. Job say, look, you sound like a foolish woman. You do not sound like my wife. Sometimes wives, I told you before, when he acting like he ain't yours, when he go to sleep, feed him, put him to sleep, put some oil on him and lay your hands on him and unleash the power of heaven. Same thing, men. Yeah, yeah, I'm not leaving us out. Sometimes she could be the same. She already laying hands. Y'all go ahead and lay hands on somebody right next to you. Say, just in case, let me lay hands on you. Come on, put that hand back and say, I'll unleash the power. Now, wait, wait, wait. So, there you go, there you go. If ain't nobody near you, then go ahead and lay hands on yourself. Say, I'll unleash the power of joy and happiness upon you. See, you, you, have, you have the power because God gave it to you. What are you doing with it? Most of us is doing like Timothy. He decided to just sit back and chill. Then Paul got the news and went and said, look, number one, I know what's in you because I laid hands on you. And I know your grandma and your mama and they prayed for you, so I know that you have it. Look at three people and say, I know you have it. Some of you might have to say, well, at least you look like you do. You have to unleash it. I'm tired of the saints being defeated. Only get happy when somebody tell you God is about to give you a new house and a new car and you happy. And then the next minute you defeat it because of what somebody said. Well, if nothing else, keep rejoicing what they say God going to give you. Quit letting the enemy rock your world. The Bible said this is the day that God has made. And what David said after that, I will. He didn't say you should. David said, I will. Now let me, let me get this personal. Let me get personal like David. See, I don't know what you all going to do. You may cry. You may walk away defeated. But for me, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice every step of the way. Even if I'm wounded, I'm going to rejoice. Talked about I'm going to rejoice. Laugh at, I'm going to rejoice. Why? I unleash the power of happiness in my life. Because just the thought of Jesus ought to bring joy. So what do you do when your influence over man is no longer effectual? When those who help you build are after destroying everything you put together. You know, some of you all have them friends that are trying to destroy your life. Laugh in your face and trying to destroy you. This ain't nothing that just happened. This stuff was going on back in the biblical days. Don't you know that the enemy does not want to see you happy? And some of the stuff that we have friends that make you happy, they only they are really just to keep you in check. So you need to free yourself. Talk to yourself and say, let's get free today. So you have to unleash that power. So when you look at it, they know where the main boat is and where the central pillar lies. One move from them and you are doomed. That's why it's very careful you quit talking your business to people. Now that was straight from heaven. Somebody needed to hear that. I don't know who, I don't know if you're here, or I don't know if you're watching, but you need to quit telling your innermost personal business to other people. Especially those you say, this is my best friend. Well, guess what? Your best friend have a best friend. Now all of your business is told to them. See, David didn't start telling people. David unleashed that power. David went straight to God. And he said, God, all of this stuff that Absalom and Athiophel is doing, then let it return on them. Sometimes you have to say, devil, you're a lie. You go back to whoever sent you. Send that message back. And God, if it's from you, I know I can't send it back. It's going to happen. But if it's not from God, guess what? You can stop it. 
Because you can't stop God's word, but you can stop what the enemy is doing. Amen. And one of your most powerful tools, the Bible said, if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Now, if he's still moving with you and bothering you, it's because you are entertaining him. That's why he's with you. You're entertaining him. You like the way he makes you feel. We just might as well be honest. Most people love to be miserable. And misery loves company. But if you like to be happy, shout, I'm unleashing. So David shows us that the one associated with God wins. And I tell people all the time, never bet against God. Because you would always lose when you bet against God. Because God never lost a battle and never will lose a battle. Can I get an amen? amen? Somebody right there to testify and say, if it had not been for God, I would be dead. But let all the witnesses shout, but God. So it doesn't matter who goes away from you. If they, listen, if people can, let, let me see your hand. Stand up if you're anointed. With power from God. So, so look, watch, watch this. Look at somebody and, and let me help you out. This is how you deal with people. This is how you unleash. Look at somebody and say, ah. Uh. So you want to walk away from it. From all of this. See you later. Now sit down and put on your dignified look. See, don't cry and mope because somebody walk away from you. You have to know who you are. You are a child of God. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, look at you. You got it going on. So God has done so many tremendous things in your life and you don't look so bad either. That's how you have to talk to yourself. You have to look in the mirror and say, you don't look too bad either. See, some of y'all, I just help y'all get your morales up. Because you've been worried about what people say about how you look. Amen? Amen. So you have to look, you have to tell yourself, if you're going to walk away, walk away. Because you're not just, what they don't understand that when they walk away from you, they're walking away from purpose. They're walking away from God's plan and purpose that's in your life. And don't beg nobody to stay with you. See, because sometimes it's better if you walk alone. So that's what it's all to be. People all want to flock around you because of the anointing. It's not about how. If your looks attracting people, then let me help you out. Sooner or later, you're going to be by yourself. Because all the biceps and the six packs and the coke figures, just, as you get older, that stuff going to leave. And watch this. When they find somebody, I'm just being real with y'all. When they find somebody that look better, that's more smarter, they're going to leave you anyway. So it ought to be the anointing that attracts people to your life. Not all the other foolishness. So don't waste your time and your money and your effort trying to look a certain way to keep people around you. If you can't be around me because I'm genuine, then guess what? I don't need you around. I'm unleashing that power. Amen. Now most of you saying, now Bishop, you're supposed to be talking about unleashing power. I'm ready to hear it. You ain't been listening. Sometimes when you unleash people out of your life, you unleash the power that they have over you. Amen. The Bible says that in the year that King Uzziah died, then Elijah saw God. He saw the power of God glorifying in the temple. So you have to be willing to walk with God. You only win when you're with God. You will not lose when you're with God. Am I making sense? So Athelfel was a mighty counselor. And his counsel was like that of God. He was never wrong. When David heard that he had joined with his enemy, he used his access to a greater power. He called to the Lord. 
Can y'all repeat that? He called to the Lord. So the next time that you're going through something, then you need to call to the Lord. Amen. And notice what he said in our text. He says, I pray thee, turn the counsel of, of Theophel into foolishness. When people are conspiring against you, don't argue with them, don't fuss with them, don't fight. You are wasting energy that you shouldn't be wasting on foolishness. It's good to tell them that's foolishness. And they're going to tell you, no, it's not foolishness. I'm telling what they said. No, to me, it's foolishness. Why? Because I'm about to unleash. I'm about to do like David. Lord, I pray to thee right now. Let all of this that a Theophil is doing, let it return back to him as foolishness. That's what it's all about. Somebody shout, it's foolishness. foolishness. Now, whenever I say he said, she said, you shout foolishness. He said. Foolishness. She said. Foolishness. They said, he did this, she did that, he walked away, she left me, they made me cry. It's all foolishness, why? You have the power to say, God, I pray now, let this foolishness, let everything that they say become foolishness. Why? Because when you, see, when you are business minded, you don't have time for foolishness. See? He's, uh, the, the greatest, wisest preacher in the world says that it is a time to laugh. Uh -huh. And it's a time to cry. Yeah. It's a time to be happy. Yeah. It's a time to be sad. So you have to know where God have you at right now yeah. in your life. And if your life is not filled with foolishness, then right there, you don't entertain it. I told you all before, I remind you again, we were sitting in a management meeting when I was working in corporate America. And so uh, my manager decided that he wanted to speak a little racial joke. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's just laughing. Joke wasn't even funny. And I was just sitting there because I knew where he was aiming and where he was going with it. And, and see, when God puts you in a place and when they try to break you and they can't break you, you unleash the power of God in their life, then they become frustrated. So they say, well, we couldn't get them this away. They used to plot and plan. Say, let us go see what we could find on Baines today. But they couldn't find nothing. And the very one, like David used all of that that was inside their camp, they had people that was in their circle that would call me and say, they're heading your way. They're coming. So I was covered by God. I didn't entertain foolishness. And so when they did this little racial joke, you know, the other ones, they kind of laughed. And I just sit there. And then he ran back and he told the other manager, well, I guess O'Banes didn't hear what we said. Uh, ha, ha, ha. And I didn't say anything, you know. I just kept looking because I was ready to unleash the power of God in there. So when it got around, he went around a circle. You know, Stanley, you have anything? Oh, no, sir, boss. I'm good. Billy, no, sir, boss. Eyes are good. Darryl, no, sir, boss. Eyes are good. He went all the way around the table. Then when he got to me, he said, Baines, what about you? I said, oh, yes, sir. You know what? I need Omar promoted from labor to semi-skilled labor where I can get all of these jobs that we've been getting penalized for taken care of. I need analyzed, promoted to truck driver because I need this, this, and this. Everybody looking at me crazy, sniggling under their voices, and I'm going down the line. I need this one promoted to operator because I can better handle my area. And when I got through with everything, guess what? He looked. And he started turning red, and, I, and so I say, and furthermore, uh, sir, I heard every word you said, but see, my grandma taught me, if you play with a puppy, he'll lick you in the mouth. Oh, boy, all hell woke up then. Uh, see, I, I unleashed some stuff. And when you got, now let me tell you something now, because you may not want to unleash, because you do know when you start unleashing, those devils will get mad and start fighting harder. So he say, get up. I bet you can't even be an Ananias know who I'm talking about because I was his, I wasn't your supervisor at one time. Yeah, I was. And so he, he stood up and he said, you probably can't even build an inlet. Go outside right now and build it. And it was in the hot summer. And I went out there and I put the inlet. He didn't know that what I knew. I built the inlet, put the top on and everything. Went back in all sweaty, tired and just, just drenched with sweat. It was like about 
15 minutes. He said, what are you doing back in here? I told you it ain't done. I said, sir, it's finished. You probably ain't put the inlets. Everything is, George, go look at it. So George comes back in and he says, boss, it's done. He did it. It's complete. Oh, I tell you what, go out there and tear it down and put it back up. 15 minutes, put all down, walk back in, still drenched with sweat, sit down. Is it done? Yes, sir, it's done. But guess what? Most of you probably want to know what happened at the end. Did it change anything? You bet it did because I unleashed heaven. And guess what? Two weeks later, everybody that I said I needed to be promoted was promoted and we had no repairs on the book. See, you don't have to get upset. And guess what? It went from Baines to Brother Baines. It went to Brother Baines. I know people say that we don't get along and I don't like you and you don't like me, but I find that I can't trust nobody. It's like my walls have ears to them, but I talk to you privately and hope that we can get along because we heard that you talked to Wayne Dussofino and we want to know. I say, sir, let me tell you something. I, if I talk to him on my own time, it's not the city's business, but let me share this with you. My grandma in the Bible taught me to say, let my yay be yay, my nay be nay. I never met the man until he came into my office and you locked your doors because you was afraid to deal with him and you all set me up to fall but guess what it all worked out I'm in the Bible y'all the Bible says that 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 whatever the enemy desire then God takes it and turn it around for your good you just got to learn how to unleash you have to unleash tell somebody to unleash what you want look I'm almost done so David shows us that the one associated with God's not only win, but he can unleash the power. This was the turning point. Look at somebody and say, I'm waiting for a turning point in my life. So no matter how equipped it, a Theophil was, he was not aligned with David. A man who was with God, a man who was after God's own heart, a man who loved God with everything. His counsel would move from wisdom to foolishness. And you might have been plundered by what? Your own people turning against you. But tell somebody, hold up. Hold up. God got you covered. Got you covered. Tell somebody, hold up. hold up. God has you covered. Has you covered. Tell somebody, dry your, dry your tears. Quit all that crying. Because your mourning is coming. And God say that weeping may endure for a night, but how many of you know that joy come in the morning? It may have made me cry an hour ago, but I got a morning coming. I got a morning of joy. I got a morning of happiness. Because all of this foolishness, somebody shout, it shall pass. Your friends may have become your enemy. You might be looking like nobody but a child of God. And you can change things. You can turn them around. There is power available to you if you connect with the greatest power ever, and that's with Christ. And if you believe in Jesus and you call upon his name, then all hell trembles. Tell somebody, stand to your feet and say, I'm about to unleash this thing. I'm about to unleash everything. You don't need a prophet to tell you. If you want a house, you desire a house, you unleash it. If you want a promotion, you unleash it. How do you do it? I'm going in here to get it. I'm going to get paid. I'm going to get promoted. I don't have the education, but I'm unleashing it. I don't have the time, but I'm unleashing it. They may not like me, but I'm unleashing it. Why? Because they're going to understand you don't have to like me, but I'm what you need. Tell somebody I'm what you need. So listen, when you learn to unleash, your life will become simpler. Your life will become joyful. You won't hold all that stuff in. See, because one door closes for you doesn't mean it's over. See, because guess what? When you unleash power, you, you, you forget the power you connected to they can lock the door, but it can't keep him out while he can go through the door. 
You say, what do you mean, Bishop? I just can't walk through the door. No, understand, get in the spirit, and you'll understand what I'm saying, is that the Bible said that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts left, right down to the marrow of the bone. It is God's heart. When you unleash, you have to say, God, I unleash your word into these people's lives, that when I step into this interview, when I step into this credit check, God, that everything will be okay, and their hearts will not be turned against me, but you will give me favor. When you unleash words, the Bible says that the life of power and death is in your tongue. It's what you unleash. If you unleash foolishness, guess what you're going to get? So you have to unleash it. And most of the time, we depend on people to unleash for us. Brother Billy, they ain't really unleashing for us because they have other things in mind. Come on, stand to your feet all over the building. Start learning to unleash for yourself. Let me help you out. Shout these words. I am a child of God. I am what he says I am. I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. I am blessed. My children is blessed. My house is blessed. I'm more powerful today than I ever been. I have powerful words that I can unleash today. Now let me see before we go further, let me see the hands of those of you all who say, Lord bless me with peace. Raise them up. Say, I unleash the peace of heaven. How many of you looking to buy your first time home? Where your hands at? Say, I unleash the favor of God. We'll walk in the doors of our new home. Now come on, I unleash the favor of God. My credit will not be a hindrance. My lack of money will not be a hindrance. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Come on business owners, I unleash the power of God business in my business my business is very prosperous it brings income to support my family and the kingdom of God I have a great business I unleash the power of God over my sickness in my sickness I'm healed in Jesus name now come on I unleash the spirit of captivity. No longer will I be in captivity to other people's thoughts. I set myself free and all that they know, all that I reveal, all that I told them, it will return to them as foolishness. I unleash the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm powerful. I'm mighty. Jesus, I can do all things. I unleash the spirit of prosperity in my life. Poverty, you have no prisoners here. I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed woman of God. Now come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. And listen, if you take nothing else away today, take that away to learn to unleash it. It's the power that's in you. If you unleash the foolishness of someone have authority over you, they're going to always have it. But you have to unleash it. And don't worry about what others are doing around you. You just keep doing what you're doing. Will you encourage three people and tell them to keep doing what you're doing? It's coming. Some of you are going through in your jobs because the enemy wants you to quit. The enemy wants you to give up. The enemy wants you to walk away. Why? Because he know if you are connected to God, then God has a brighter future for you. So what? They're getting all the promotions. Them, them are not the ones God wants you to have. Just keep going on with it. And you'll find out. God has you in a position because he have you there. 
So listen, listen, the doors of the church is open, okay? Not just for membership, but if you need prayer, we want you to come.